Hi, this is Hector Garcia. And one of the most common services I provide for my clients is consolidating uh, multiple companies, uh, multiple uh, QuickBooks files into one, uh, specifically for the purpose of combining reports. So grabbing information, accounting information from multiple entities, multiple companies, and creating one consolidated financial statement, uh, profit and loss balance sheet, et cetera, et cetera. Now, my email is hector at garciacpa.com. So if you have any questions, go ahead and send them over via email. Now, let's break down what are the options. If you got uh, QuickBooks, whether it's QuickBooks Online or Desktop, Pro Premier Enterprise, whatever, you can we can basically narrow it down to four. If I got QuickBooks Enterprise, that's the easiest one. That's my, my most common recommended solution for anybody that wants to consolidate is to work with QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, it is the most expensive version of QuickBooks, but it is the most robust, the most complete from a, a reporting standpoint. So that's actually the central theme of today's video. We're actually gonna show that process step-by-step. Step. Now, if you don't have QuickBooks Enterprise, you can export the reports to Excel and then combine them manually. So I'll create a, a second video uh, just on that completely separate. Now, the other thing we can do is we can use a single QuickBooks file to manage multiple entities by using classes and or locations. However, that could be a problem because, um, you know, for legal purposes and audit purposes, IRS purposes, et cetera, et cetera, you may want to keep this multiple entities completely separated and not commingled. But it is a solution that otherwise wouldn't require you to have QuickBooks Enterprise or do a lot of extensive work to combine them. And then finally, you can use a third-party app. So if uh, the QuickBooks Enterprise consolidation is not good enough, or maybe you don't want to move to QuickBooks Enterprise because you're work working with QuickBooks Online, which I understand QuickBooks Online is a great uh, program, you could use a third-party consolidator and there's some apps that are web-based for QuickBooks Online, some are desktop-based. Now, real quick, just to kind of review those. So if you don't have QuickBooks Enterprise, you're never going to get it. You're not going to upgrade to it, whatever. Uh, you're working with QuickBooks Pro Premier Accountant on the desktop side or online, whichever, Simple Start, Essentials, or Plus. Those are my top three favorite consolida consolidation apps, QVinci, Spotlight Reporting, and Fathom. Now, all... All of them uh, vary in pricing. Um, from my experience, any of these apps that you go with, working with three, four, or five companies, uh, don't expect to be paying anything less than eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars a month for these apps. So they're not cheap. However, they do make consolidation uh, uh, painless and also create those reports on the fly, real time, in a web-based application. That's actually really, really nice. And you can combine, um, all of these allow you to combine. So some desktop, some online, that's actually awesome. Now, if you're working with QuickBooks desktop only, there's three more, the sort of advanced apps. Uh, one's called QCube, the other one's called Bison Analytics, and then M4F9. All of those are approved by Intuit in the uh, QuickBooks desktop marketplace. Those are really powerful, really robust. Anyway, let's go uh, to today's topic, which is combining reports in QuickBooks Enterprise. So let's go to the demo. And I have two files open just to kind of illustrate here. I have one on uh, the left side of the screen, one on the right side of the screen. And to just to provide some context, what I'm trying to achieve is create a profit and loss, for example, for last fiscal year. Well, let's, do, um, let's do this fiscal year. So one profit and loss from this fiscal year from one company and combine it with another company that's maybe the same ownership group Let's do this fiscal year. I want to combine the two because maybe um, these business owners want to know how these two companies uh, do together. So you're looking at both profit and loss here just to kind of see the, the context. So at the end of the day, basically, we want the report that shows us a net income of 118 for one, net income for 133 of the other, and then the combination of the two that should be around 250. Okay, so how do we do that with QuickBooks Enterprise? It's actually quite easy. Now, I can't have both open at the same time, so I definitely would have to uh, close one of them. So let me just close one of them here. And 
leave the other one open. And as long as I have one of them open, and, and by the way, this is not just for one QuickBooks file, this can work with three, four, five, there's actually no limit on how many you can consolidate. And again, you don't have to buy a third party software because you're working with QuickBooks Enterprise. So you go to the reporting menu. So you open at least one, open, let's call it the first one. And then you go to the reports menu and then you click on combine reports with multiple companies or from multiple companies. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then it's gonna say, okay, I got one file open. Go ahead and add all the files from all the other QuickBooks files that I need to consolidate. So I click on add files and then I have to look for it uh, in my computer. So they're gonna be in my computer uh, somewhere. In this particular case, uh, they're gonna be in the same way, in the same place where all my, where my other QuickBooks files are. So let me uh, look for it inside the computer. So as I search inside the computer and I go into the folder inside of my uh, Windows machine uh, where my other QuickBooks file is, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And I could uh, select uh, one by one, right? And add multiple, right? So it, you're not just uh, stuck to one. So we can add one, click on open, and then click on add files and click on one more, click open, and then just start kind of moving them as you go. So I can actually pick uh, multiple ones not just the two that I was showing before, but for, for the time being, let's just talk about these two that we showed just now to avoid um, any confusion. Now on the date range, this is where we select what date range we want to see. So let's say I'm gonna select uh, the entire year here, and then I pick whether I want them in accrual or cash. So let's say I want them both in accrual. And then what is the combined name that I wanna see on the title of the report? Because this is actually gonna create an Excel report for me. This is not going to combine the two QuickBooks files from a database perspective. It's just going to combine the reports. That's a really important thing. So let's call it a combined uh, group, for example. And then here on the right side, uh, I mean on the left side, I pick which reports I want. So I typically just pick them all because it doesn't really hurt to have uh, multiple. So I just pick them all. So it creates one really big Excel file with different tabs. Now here where it says Excel options, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can add, um, you know, the little export guide. We can show grids, uh, free Spain, out of fit. Uh, we can do all these options. Normally I just don't really mess with it. I leave it exactly um, like it is. I really don't need to change the settings, but you know, just so you know, there's some settings there that you can change. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, okay. And then I'm gonna click on combine reports in Excel. And then what uh, QuickBooks Enterprise is gonna do is it's gonna close the company file, open each one of them, and it'll ask you to log in. So you do have to have uh, the username and password for every one of those uh, QuickBooks files. And also you have to have a high level of permissions, right? Because you have to be able to pull reports. I mean, if you log in as admin, that would be best, but you have to have uh, almost like admin level uh, permissions to be able to pull all these and log in into each file. So you kind of go through the motions, uh, allow it to log into each one, ask you for the username and password, and it's kind of going through the motions and I'm just basically clicking okay, 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 and I'm waiting. Okay, and that could take anywhere between uh, five to 10 minutes. I had some companies in which I consolidate 15 companies and they're pretty large files, and those could take up to 20 minutes. I mean, it could take a while depending on, on how big the databases are. This one in particular, uh, it took about three minutes to do um, in total. So basically this is the Excel file that was created. Uh, you see a, a full balance sheet here and you see company A and company B in two different uh, columns. And it really helps if the chart of accounts are similar, especially like, look, these two balance sheets are very, very clean. They're not really that different from each other. Notice that this is a pretty much a really nicely readable uh, consolidated set of financial statements. And if you go to the balance sheet summary, that's just as well. They're just really high category accounts. But if you go into the profit and loss, you're gonna see this gets a little messy. Because uh, if you look at the profit and loss here, look how many accounts there are in total. <clears throat> and notice that there's even uh, some accounts here that are only used by one company and some accounts here that's only used by the other company. And this can, this can get even bigger or larger as I get uh, into three, four, five different companies. So it is uh, it is crucial, very important that you go through your chart of accounts 
and um, and try to clean those up as much as possible uh, and, and make them as unified or as similar. Because now take a look at, for example, me trying to print a consolidated financial statement, just the PL itself is three pages in Excel. Uh, so uh, one of the other things you can do is you can collapse uh, some of these uh, sub accounts. So this is the nice thing about Excel. We can just basically uh, come in here and select all the ones that maybe I don't want the details. I can right click and hide them. And same thing as this, I could come here, uh, select all these, right click and hide them. So it wouldn't be that much work to hide them. And uh, just go back to the setting here. When we were combining the reports here on the Excel options, there was one little uh, checkbox here that says auto outline. If I would have picked that auto outline, uh, then there would have been like a little uh, collapse and expand button here on the top that I can expand and collapse uh, those sub levels. But e either way, if you forget to do that, um, selecting a few columns and clicking hide is not uh, that bad. It sure beats doing any of these things uh, by hand anyway. So um, the statement of cash flows also consolidates. The trial balance also consolidates. Uh, my profit and loss by class consolidates. So that means that this is gonna go um, class by class across the companies and give you a, a fully expanded PL by class. And then you also got uh, sales by customer. And this is useful if you got the same set of customers in both companies, because you can actually compare uh, companies across, across multiple companies. And that's really it. It doesn't have that many uh, powerful features, but as promised, uh, we have the 118, the 131, and the total of 251 uh, combined. Now, I wanna make a really important uh, note. Notice that I said combine companies, I didn't say consolidate. In the accounting world, consolidation is a little bit more complex than combining. Uh, consolidation involves knowing what the relationship between the two companies are. And if the companies uh, sell to each other, for example, we need to um, remove the inner company sales. So that would require you to do maybe an additional adjustment in Excel or maybe create a, a third consolidating company just for making the journal entries. So, so I know that sounds kind of weird, but you would have to create one more uh, a QuickBooks file with the same chart of accounts as all the other ones and just use it to do consolidating journal entries. That way, um, when you combine all three, they basically um, adjust to each other. So that's something you can do. Um, otherwise, you would have to manually make those adjustments in Excel, intercompany sales, intercompany costs, intercompany accounts payable, intercompany accounts receivable, or maybe even something strange like intercompany inventory transfer. That sort of thing needs to be looked at with the magnifying glass when we do a quote unquote consolidation. So that was combining uh, QuickBooks reports from multiple QuickBooks file using uh, QuickBooks Enterprise. And this is part two of multiple company consolidations in QuickBooks. On the first part, part one, I show you how to make consolidations using QuickBooks Enterprise with a specific uh, function that QuickBooks Enterprise has that allows you to consolidate multiple QuickBooks files. On this uh, part, part two, we're gonna talk about combining reports in Excel. So you actually don't have to have QuickBooks Enterprise. You just need to have any version of QuickBooks Desktop like QuickBooks Pro, Premiere, Accountant, or Enterprise. In, in this example, we're gonna do QuickBooks Enterprise because that's the version that I use for most of my clients anyway. But again, this will work on any version of QuickBooks Desktop. So we're gonna talk about export reports into Excel and combine them manually. Now, you're gonna see that there's a lot of nuance around it. You gotta pay attention to a lot of the little details and you're gonna start seeing how I'm gonna make modifications to the files to make this work. All right, so um, let's go ahead and open up QuickBooks. And I already have both of the files open so for example, on the left side, I have a company called Wholesale Company. So let's say this is one of the businesses that I own, Wholesale Company. And then on the right side, uh, I own another company called Advertising Services. And what I wanna do is I wanna combine these or consolidate them into one single report. So, and again, you don't have to have them both open at the same time. I'm doing that to just to make it easier to illustrate uh, the point here. 
So I'm going to start with the first file and then I'm going to take this report and I'm going to export it into Excel. So the first thing I want to do is obviously go to reports, company financial, profit and loss standard because that's what I'm uh, combining. So I'm going to pull the profit and loss and most of the times I want to hit collapse because I, uh, when I consolidate, I typically don't look at sub accounts and we'll, we'll discuss that as we do the consolidation. But we're going to start with a consolidated uh, or a collapsed uh, financial statement. So let me export this into Excel. So I'm just going to click on Excel, new Excel worksheet, and then I'm going to follow the prompts to open uh, the report in Excel. And there it is. There's my first report in Excel. If I actually try to print this, I just want to show you real quick. If I try to print it, I do have my header in the top that shows wholesale company. And that's something that I'm going to have to modify. I'm going to have to change the header for it to say something like combined uh, report or something like that. But up here where it says total, here I'm going to type wholesale. So I'm going to replace the word total to wholesale because now I have to count on those titles for me to know uh, what's going on. So let me go into the other file. Okay, and do the same thing. Go to Excel, create new worksheet, and just follow the prompt and export that into Excel as well. And now that I got the two spreadsheets, let me give a title to this one. So this is the advertising services business. Okay, so I got one spreadsheet on the right side with one of my financial statements and one on the left side with my other financial statements. And the idea is that I, I bring all this information here uh, to consolidate. So let me first grab the title from the other one and then bring it into here. And then basically on this spreadsheet on the right side is where we're going to be pasting all of our information. Let's start with revenue. That's the easy one. Notice that none of our income accounts are called revenue. So I'm going to have to basically create uh, a new one in here somewhere. I'll do it at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it here. There we go. Now I have to be very careful that this 411 go in the wholesale column. Because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to combine them, but also show the performance of uh, both of them. Now, what I don't want to do is bring in those lines, those subtotals. That will make it uh, very confusing. So when I do my copy and paste, I want to make sure that when I paste, I do paste values. That way I don't paste any other formatting. And then I'll cut that and paste that over here. Okay, good. So I'm good to go with revenue. And you will notice that my my total income already has a formula in there and we may have to uh, modify that formula. We'll take care of that uh, later on. Now let's take a look at our cost of goods sold. So see none of these accounts match exactly the accounts we have here. So technically we're gonna have to insert five lines in there. So I'm gonna have to come in here and just insert five lines, right click insert, open up that space and then I'll bring in the accounts, copy them, paste them, grab the numbers, copy them, and then paste them on the right side. Perfect, okay? And again, th these are not uh, matching next to each other because they don't have the same account names. I mean, it would have been really useful to plan this before and make sure both uh, financial statements have the same account names. We'll discuss that. That's gonna be a little bit later on when I discuss the prep work that should go behind uh, the, the QuickBooks files before we actually try to do something like this. Okay, so let's take a look at our expense account. So we have, uh, let's assume for a minute that all these will be new. So let's see how many are here in total. Okay, so that's 22. So we can insert uh, 22 lines in here. Let's see, hit insert. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with that, all my account list, hit copy, bring that over. Okay. I didn't insert enough uh, columns, I mean, let me, I mean rows, let me insert some more. Okay, hopefully that's enough. Let's try that. <clears throat> Just make sure I'm still overlapping, so let me insert some more. Again, this is a very manual process. This is why on the first video I talk about how QuickBooks Enterprise does this really, really nicely. 
<clears throat> okay, let's see. So it's based. Okay, there we go. So now there's no overlap. Perfect. And then I'll delete that extra one and then take all my numbers and paste them here on the wholesale side. Okay, perfect. Okay, now for the time being, let's just do a quick uh, sanity check here. Let's do a formula that sums up all of our expenses just to make sure we arrive at the same number here. And let's do another formula here that calculates all my cost of goods sold. Okay, so my gross profit would be in this case, my total income minus my cost of goods sold. And I have to also make sure that I have a formula here that also sums up all of my income. Perfect. Okay. So if I take my uh, total cost of goods sold, which is going to come from my total income, I should have my gross profit of 202. Let's just double check on the left side. Okay, we're good to go. So now, so far, so good. I got my gross profit going uh, pretty well. Now let's take a look at our total expenses, which in this case is uh, 935. Let's see. And there it is 93 or 93, 590. Okay, that matches. So I can also do my net income calculation, which would be my gross profit minus my total expense. Perfect. 108, 108, 843. And then I got my other expense. You could, you could just copy and paste that here and that should be uh, fairly simple. I could just copy these formulas over. That should be identical. And I can copy this formula over and that should also be identical. All right, perfect. So that works. Uh, just fine. What I also want to do is take this entire column and hit copy and then come into G and then I'm going to paste special and only bring in the formatting. So I'm going to bring in the uh, formats only and then hit OK. That way these are all formatted with the same fonts, same line, everything all the same. So I know my numbers are good, but now if I try to print this, this is going to be a very messy report. Um, because I, I want to, I want this to be as consolidated as possible. I know I couldn't win on the income side. I couldn't win on the cost of goods side, but maybe on the expenses, we'll be able to find uh, some things and match. So let's, let's, let's be in the hunt for those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select only the expenses side. So only the expenses side in here, and then I'm going to sort them. So I'm going to go to sort. And then I'll sort them by the same column where my expenses are. So I would select column E and then hit OK. And there you go. So we're going to see a couple of these <clears throat> that are uh, the same. And all the ones that are the same, those are going to be uh, pretty easy. So what I'll do is I'll, in this case, I'll copy and bring this up. Copy this and bring this up. I can delete the extras. Copy this, bring this up. Delete the extra. I can also do cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. And some of these numbers are similar probably because, you know, the way I did my accounting internally had uh, similar numbers there. So uh, cut, paste, paste. Okay. Uh, let me see. So these two, okay, I can also consolidate these two. Perfect. Okay, so some of these accounts have the same names and the ones that do, it will, they will go to that process. Perfect. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, and we start seeing some that don't. Uh, those are the ones that we're going to start deleting. And I'm just cutting and pasting to put them up in the same line. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then all these that have uh, basically blanks, I can delete them. So that should be a fairly easy process. I can just resort these. And I can resort these maybe by column F, doesn't really matter. And then all the ones that are blank, I can just delete. 
okay? Make sure my formula here works again. So sum all of my expenses. And we can now re resort these maybe in alphabetical order. Let's see that. So sort by column E. Okay. And that should give me a consolidated. So then at this point, all I would have to do is then just add these up together. So I would go to equals that plus that. So the two columns and then come in with cost of goods sold. Okay, notice I'm just copying cost of goods sold. I could go across, but it would be pointless the way um, it is configured here. And then we'll add these two together. And then we just copy these down. Okay, and then what I can do is I can delete the blanks. And then I can copy and then I can paste again just the formats. This would be total and there you go there's my consolidated uh, profit and loss report for the total so that was pretty pretty simple and and the premise is this was a very manual process because the chart of accounts wasn't the same how would have been possible for me to pull this off without so much manual work so I wanted to show you this process first before we do it the other way the way I would do this it's when I go into the chart of accounts of my QuickBooks files is I would create more parent accounts and put most of these as sub accounts. So let me tell you what I explained by that. So for example, here in all the uh, income accounts, I would go into my chart of accounts and then just create one account called revenue right, to match the one on my left side. So I'll do one account called revenue. And then I would make all of these is sub account of revenue. So I'm just clicking and dragging to the right. You can also um, right click edit and click on make sub account of revenue. That's another way you can do it. I obviously want to do it the fast way. So I'm just uh, dragging them to the right and that should put them all as a sub account of revenue. So see, so when I look at my financial statement, uh, I can actually collapse them or expand them. And that would actually allow me to literally just copy and paste them together. On the cost of goods sold side, I could do the exact same thing. So um, in this case, I may not need to because cost of goods sold is a, an account that typically we collapse as well. So I can actually just collapse cost of goods sold as a whole. And then when I export it, I'll export it like this, which would actually uh, be perfect. But then the tricky part is under the expense account. So what I'm first going to do, because I, if you look at the first exercise, we have the same accounts. But if you look at the way they're displayed here, uh, they may not be displayed on alphabetical order. So I'm going to go to a sort by and do a default. And that's going to go alphabetical order. And then I'll go with the other company here. And the same thing, I'll do sort by default. And that should be in alphabetical order. And to further uh, double check that these are alphabetical order, I'm going to go into the list menu, go to chart of accounts, and then click up here where it says accounts or down there and click on resort list and hit OK. And that would resort them in alphabetical order just in case I manually change the order. So resort list, okay, that will resort them again. So now when I'm looking at the financial statements again with the right accounts collapse, I technically should have the same accounts more or less uh, there being used. Now, in some cases, for example, you see this one is called Mios Local on this side and then it looks meals and entertainment on that side, I should definitely change the name of that. So I should start uh, planning and making sure that all my accounts uh, have the same uh, name more or less. So we'll call this meals and entertainment. Okay, and then, okay, per perfect. So now let's compare, let's see what else was different. And then we got uh, one was called wages on one side and the other one's called wages non-project related so i'm probably going to also change uh, the name of that wages non-project related and just put wages in there again you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of custom naming to be able to get uh, your 
uh, your accounts to work correctly. So there you go. So now I, I fixed them both, but there's one last trick here. Um, we really don't know what accounts are being used on each side. It is possible that on one side, an account is being used and on, and on the other side, an, an account is not. So I'll just I'm gonna throw an example out there. Then let me, um, let me see if I can delete any one transaction. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these transactions here. That way, uh, nothing is being used on this account called business license and permits. So what's gonna happen is that when I look at my profit and loss, business license and fees uh, shouldn't uh, show up at all. Um, so when I actually go and consolidate these, that one is going to be missing. So let's do the example with that. So then we get to appreciate the last step that we're gonna take. So let me go ahead and uh, close my other report here, the one I was working on, and do the Excel export again. And I'm sorry I had to do this uh, twice like this in, in making the video extra long. However, you really don't get to enjoy the second part until you kind of go through the, the long process of doing these. So after we cleaned up a chart of accounts, um, then we're gonna export the reports again. And we'll do it on the other QuickBooks file. Okay. And we should soon, soon have both uh, Excel files open there. Okay, there's one and there's the other. So let's put them next to each other. Okay, there we go. So this is my wholesale. And this is my services. Accommodate these, okay. So there's my wholesale and then there's my services, okay. So I got my two revenue lines, they match 100%. So that's not gonna be a lot of work. My cost of goods sold, yep, I made a mistake. I didn't match them up together, but again, I can just uh, do a hide in here like this. And I can also do a hide in here like this, because in this case, let's say, for example, I'm just gonna manually hide them. Okay, so then I'll, I'll have them exact. And then when I actually try to copy and paste this information, let me show you. And I'm gonna go down here. Notice that I'm long here. And the reason why I'm long is because I have more accounts on this side being used than the ones on the left side. And the reason for that is because I deleted those two transactions that were hitting uh, business license and permits on the left side, or I, I forgot which transaction it was, but I, I deleted a transaction that was hitting a category on the left side that is not being hit on the right side. And therefore, um, these are not gonna match 100%. So I'm gonna close these to show you what is the ultimate uh, way of getting this done. So again, once again, once you, you at least clean up the chart of accounts as much as possible, what you're gonna do is you're gonna export the chart of accounts from one of the files and import it into the other one. And then export it from the other one and import it on, on the, the one that you exported from originally. That way we get the exact same chart of accounts on both sides. So I'm gonna go to File, Utilities, and Export List to IIF. And let me just make sure I only have one QuickBooks file open at a time. And just some side commentary. Um, it is absolutely much easier to just work with uh, QuickBooks Enterprise that can do the consolidation, see the first part of this video series. I, you know, I've, uh, depending on how much time you have to spare to create these reports, uh, is it worth it saving, you know, a couple thousand bucks at QuickBooks Enterprise um, uh, costs? I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Okay, so this is the advertising services company and I'll save the chart of accounts there and I'll switch over to my other company which was my wholesale. And then I'm gonna import the chart of accounts in this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the file menu, utilities, import, IIF file, select the IIF file I just exported from the other file, 
this is going to bring in the chart of accounts. Okay, so now whatever accounts I had on that side will now be merged with the accounts on this side. And you have to do that, trust me. And then I'll do the same thing here. I'm gonna to go to File, Utilities, Export, List to IAF, Chart of Accounts. And this is from the wholesale company. And then I'll switch over to my other one. And this becomes way more complex when you're consolidating three or four companies, you can start uh, picturing this, right? Um, but, you know, hopefully, um, you know, you don't, don't, don't have that many to consolidate. Again, if you're working with three companies or more, I would definitely just get QuickBooks Enterprise and not worry about this whole thing. Okay, so let me import the the chart of accounts from the, from the other one into this one. And now I officially have both chart of accounts completely identical, including balance sheet accounts, which, which should also be kind of tricky and kind of messy. So you, you may want to work with sub accounts and groupings. Uh, that way all the accounts uh, show up more cleanly. Anyway, so let's pull up my profit and loss for this year. Okay, there's my profit and loss. See, nothing has changed. I imported a chart of accounts, but nothing really has changed. It will change when I do something else. And let me open the second company. Okay, and this would be for my advertising services business. Perfect, and I'll put these two next to each other. So my wholesale on the left and my advertising services on the right. That way we can look at both uh, reports in there. Okay, and so far we haven't done anything uh, fancy yet. We're about to get there. So after we imported the chart of accounts on both sides, the, the 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 profit and loss reports don't look different. Why? Because there may be extra accounts in there, but there isn't necessarily uh, transactions in those accounts. But there's one very specific trick that I'm about to do. I'm gonna go to Customize Report, click on Advance, and then click on All. Extremely important. So we're gonna go to Advance and then All, and hit OK. And that's going to include all my accounts that have uh, zeros in it. I don't care about that for now. I'm gonna go in my other reports, go to advance and then click on all and do the exact same thing. So now I'm gonna expand both of, both of my uh, chart of accounts uh, on both sides, including all the ones that are not being used. But what's really nice about these is because we, I am doing this uh, show all when I export this into Excel, I don't have to clean anything up manually. So you're gonna see exactly how that works as I put that in there. So let me export the first one. Okay, and then I'll go on the other QuickBooks file, do the same thing. Perfect. Okay, so now both of my Excel files open so I'm gonna put them here next to each other. Okay, there we go. And then, so if you remember, the idea behind the whole long process of exporting the chart of accounts from one and then uh, and then importing it to the other one and vice versa, what was so then when we do the copy and paste in Excel that I don't have to manually look into each account and match them up and that sort of thing. I can literally, uh, let me type here advertising services, which is the name of one of the companies. I can literally come in here and take just the column. I don't even have to look at the accounts. I just know they're gonna be right and paste them in here. And notice that when I scroll up and down, all my, all my lines line up perfectly. Again, the reason for that is because we have the exact same chart of accounts in both sides, okay? And because we have the same chart of accounts in both sides, I don't have to worry about matching them up and that sort of thing. So then I can come in here and do the total or the consolidated, and then I can simply just hit equals that plus that, press enter, and then drag all the way down. I do have to get rid of these random zeros that just don't belong here. Okay, all the little gaps. Okay, if 
Perfect. And then I'm going to copy one of these columns and then paste special formats only. Look at that. Beautiful consolidation. Although it seemed like a really long process because I was getting the chart of accounts working, you really only have to do that once. Afterwards, you don't have to worry about that ever again. Now, the last piece here, if I select all these columns and I go to data uh, filter, I can actually come into my total column and then just uh, uncheck the zeros and hit OK. And that's going to get rid of all the accounts that I'm not using. And then at the end, uh, even even if I have extra accounts in there that are not being used, they'll fill, they're going to be filtered out uh, super quickly and super easy. OK, so that was um, cons uh, combining two financial statements from QuickBooks using Excel and all the little nuances around getting it put together. This is part two of the four part video series. On the third video that I will post within a month or so, we'll talk about using a single QuickBooks file and using classes uh, to manage multiple entities and all the pros and cons of doing that. And then on the fourth one, which will release probably around summer of 2017, we'll talk about using third party apps. So there's a whole bunch of third party apps out there. So we're going to pick a few and then just kind of talk about those.